Good afternoon. The stage, the stage is going to be um, my staff, but obviously Mayor Lightfoot, Cook County State's Attorney Kim Fox, and we have New Life Church Pastor Matt DiMatteo, De 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 uh, along with um, Alderman Cardenas, and I believe we had another alderman. Alderman Rodriguez. Did he show? Okay, alderman Rodriguez as well. Our city has been shaken, and no one can make sense of this tragedy. This morning, I spoke with Melissa's mother in her home, not only to check in on her during this especially tough time, but to also let her know that we found the offenders responsible for taking Melissa's life, and they have been charged. The shoot discharge of a firearm in an occupied vehicle. The driver, Javier Guzman, 27, was also arrested and charged. He is facing one felony count of first degree murder and one felony count of attempted first degree murder. In addition, Javier is also charged with one felony count of aggravated UUW. I'm gonna recount the sequence of events and I'll try to pause because it's quite a complex case. On Saturday, January 22nd, officers responded to a shot spotter alert call at 2.56 p.m. Our investigation determined that three purported gang members were standing on the corner of 26th and Kaminsky. Moments later, an individual emerged south of their location near an alley and fired a handgun at them. That's when Melissa uh, and her mother were crossing the street and shot in the head. Melissa shot in the head. A 29-year-old male detectives subsequently identified and tracked the vehicle used in the shooting using pod video cameras and private surveillance video, as well as license plate reader technology. The investigation further revealed this vehicle, the same vehicle, pulled into a nearby alley before the shooting. So we tracked video pre and post shooting. And we, re we saw that this car, this same car, pulled into the alley before the shooting. Video shows a passenger exited the vehicle fired shots at the victims that we mentioned on 26th and Comiskey, got back in the vehicle and fled the scene. During the shooting, another vehicle parked near the scene was hit several times by this gunfire. A man and his nine-year-old the offender's vehicle on Monday, this past Monday, January 24th, and identified the driver of the vehicle. We also seized uh, the handgun that was also inside this vehicle that we recovered on Monday, and uh, the gun matched as well as the casings and the fired bullets at the scene. Additional investigations led to identification of a shooter who was arrested on yesterday. I can't say enough about our officers and detectives on the scene working around the clock relentlessly to be able to bring these offenders to justice, justice, or the hard work of our area technology centers, our ATC rooms, and all of the officers who work there. In addition, our home homicide and
officers in the 10th district who worked with all the homicide detectives and with the community uh, to ensure uh, we brought these people to justice. And I also want to really emphasize this point, uh, the role of the community, the way they stepped up and came together and helped us solve this case. Many people came forward with um, witness testimony about what they saw, who they saw, all the vehicles involved, when it happened, where it happened, and offered up uh, availability to our detectives. Building trust through positive community interactions is a worthwhile endeavor. Melissa was a precious little girl, and it is unacceptable that she is the latest Chicagoan to fall victim to senseless senseless gang violence. As a city, we mourn. We mourn her loss because no child should know violence and no parent to dance. She was a light to her family. And we speak her, her name because she represented the innocence and potential of every child in Chicago. And what happened to Melissa shouldn't happen to anyone anywhere. We have to do more in our communities to reach our young people, we do. And that's all of us and apply even more pressure to get rid of gangs and guns. And we will not tolerate this and we hold, and we will hold all of these offenders accountable to the fullest extent of the law. I want to again acknowledge the dedicated officers and detectives working in this case from day one and the community's small measure of closure to the Ortega family and the little village community during this very, very difficult time of bereavement. Now we're turning over to Chief Angel Novales, who will translate my comments into Spanish. Angel. Thank you, Superintendent. Thank you, Mayor. Estamos aquí hoy para anunciar los cargos en el asesinato de Melissa Ortega, de ocho años. Ella fue asesinada a media tarde mientras tomaban la mano de su madre. Nuestra ciudad ha sido fuertemente impactada y nadie puede dar sentido de esta tragedia. Esta mañana, Superintendent Brown habló con la madre de Melissa, no solo para ofrecerle su pesame durante este tiempo tan difícil y doloroso, pero también para hacerle saber que encontramos los responsables de su asesinato de su hija, la persona quien le quitó la vida a Melissa. Le traemos cargos a un juvenil de 16 años. Los cargos son de delito le traemos los siguientes cargos. Un cargo por asesinato. Un cargo por intento asesinato. Dos cargos por delitos graves. Descarga agravada de arma de fuego a un vehículo ocupado. Este sábado de enero a las 2.56 de la tarde, los oficiales respondieron a una llamada de la, el sistema ShotSpotter, que es tecnología quien los avisa de tiroteos y nos da la dirección del incidente. Nuestra investigación determinó que tres personas que son miembros de una pandilla estaban parados en la esquina de la 26 y la Kamensky. 
Momentos después, un individuo emergió de, del sur de su dirección cerca de un callejón y disparó una pistola. Fue entonces cuando Melissa, que estaba cruzando la calle con su madre, recibió un disparo en la cabeza. Un hombre de 26 años recibió un disparo en la espalda mientras atentaba de huir a los disparos. Los detectives identificaron y siguieron el vehículo utilizando cámaras de video pod y video de vigilancia privada y también utilizaron la tecnología de detección de placas. La investigación reveló que antes del tiroteo, este vehículo se detuvo en un callejón cercano. Cuando un pasajero salió del vehículo y disparó una arma de fuego hacia las víctimas, volvió el vehículo y huyó la escena. Durante el tiroteo, otro vehículo est estacionado cerca de la escena fue golpeado con balas varias veces. Un hombre y su hija de nueve años que estaban adentro escaparon por poco y no fueron heridos. Recuperamos el vehículo el lunes 24 de enero y identificamos al conductor del vehículo. También recuperamos las pistolas y pudimos comparar y saber que eran los mismos casquillos de la bala. Investigaciones adicionales llevaron a la identificación de la persona quien disparó la arma de fuego y por cual fue detenido ayer. No puedo decir lo suficiente sobre la dedicación y el gran esfuerzo y el trabajo de nuestros oficiales y detectives quien trabajaron la escena. El gran trabajo de nuestros oficiales, detectives, en los centros tecnológicos de la área y en el equipo de especial investigación de los homicidios. Y quiero reconocer, muy importante, a la comunidad por la forma que se reunieron y ayudaron a resolver este caso. Melissa era una niña preciosa. Esto es inaceptable que ella sea la última en ser víctima de la violencia de pandillas sin sentido. Como ciudad, lamentamos su pérdida porque ningún niño o niña debe conocer la violencia y ningún padre debe tener que soportar algo así. Recordamos a Melissa, quien en todos los niños de Chicago. Y hoy le quiero, le quiero, y hoy lo que le pasó a Melissa no debería pasarle a nadie. En cualquier lugar, tenemos que hacer más en nuestras comunidades para llegar, llegar a la juventud antes que las pandillas los conviertan en delincuentes y aplicar más presión para deshacernos de las pandillas y las armas. No, tolera, no toleramos y, y traemos y vamos a traer a los responsables de actos así a la luz de la justicia para que rindan cuentas. Quiero conocer de nuevo a la dedicación de los detectives que trabajaron en, el, en este caso desde el primer día y el apoyo de la comunidad que los ayudó a obtener la justicia que la familia de Ortega necesitaba. El departamento de policía solo puede esperar que este arresto traiga algún tipo de cierre a la, y a la comunidad de La Villita durante este momento tan difícil. Gracias por su tiempo. Yara, and now I'd like to introduce, um, I would like to introduce Cook County State's Attorney, Kim Fox. Thank you, Superintendent Brown, Mayor Lightfoot, CPD staff, as well as my first assistant, Risa Lanier, who joins us today, as well as members of the community. The murder of eight-year-old Melissa Ortega is horrific. Melissa is an American dream that has seamlessly and senselessly been taken from all of us, 
while merely walking down the street on a Saturday afternoon with her mother. To Melissa's mom and her family, I have no words that are of comfort to you. But I am committed to getting you justice. To Melissa's classmates at Zapata Academy, we as a city must all do better for you. I know how hard it is to lose a classmate. I, as a student at a CPS school, lost one as well. I've experienced it, and I want you to know that I see you and I understand you. This violence in our communities across this city will not be tolerated. We are simply tired of it. Collaborations with our law enforcement partners and the community are a critical piece in combating violence. As Superintendent Brown said, that while the police and detectives of the Chicago Police Department and the Assistant State's Attorneys of the Cook commitment of the members of the community who were willing to step up and to speak out on behalf of Melissa and those who have been impacted by her tragic death. We are grateful for the community. As I've said repeatedly, the way that we get justice in our courtrooms is through law enforcement and community working hand in hand. I want to once again express my gratitude to Chicago police detectives, as well as to the assistant state's attorneys who put this arrest together and work to approve the charges expeditiously where the evidence are at the center of our work, which is why we practice a victim-centered and trauma-informed approach to prosecution. For those who have been impacted by by this incident, whether as a witness or a community member who wish to get in touch with our victim witness unit to provide or in need of additional support, you may contact that unit at 773 in court tomorrow for a bond hearing at 11 a.m. One of the defendants, as the superintendent has mentioned, is a 16-year-old juvenile who, due to the nature of these offenses, will be tried in adult court. So he will be in adult court at 11 a.m. for bond court. Again, we want to share our heartfelt sympathies as a mother, Mother of daughters, I cannot imagine the horrific tragedy and how this has impacted Melissa's mother. But I can tell you that we at the Cook County State's Attorney's Office will work tirelessly to bring justice on behalf of the people of Cook County. With that, I'd like to bring to the stage Pastor of New Life Church, Matt DiMatteo. Good afternoon. My name is Matt DiMatteo. I'm a pastor at New Life Community Church, the executive director of New Life Centers. And I've lived and served in Little Village for the past 22 years. Sadly, I've buried dozens of young people over this time. And this week was one of the most tragic and, and sad that we uh, have faced uh, in my time here and as a community. I'm going to keep my uh, remarks brief because I have a prepared statement from the family. We've walked with the family since Saturday afternoon at 2.45. We've walked with them in planning and preparing and healing. And it's been uh, 
a heavy, heavy season, but the family wanted to say thank you for all the support. As of this moment, we've seen well over, I think the last time I saw $65,000 come in on the GoFundMe. on their journey toward healing. So on behalf of the family, a big thank you to, to the city for coming together. Now I'm going to read a prepared statement from Araceli, the mother of Melissa. Even with the immense sorrow I have been feeling this week, the media has forced me to make a statement with their nonstop calls and knocks on my front door. I hope this statement is more than enough and you let us grieve in peace. Words cannot describe the pain I am feeling. On January 22nd, I lost my greatest treasure in life. I lost my princess. She was the reason why I got up every morning. Everything I did, I did for her. We immigrated from Mexico six months ago. We were filled with dreams and had high aspirations. We imagined a better life here. We came in search of the American dream we so famously hear of, but instead I get to live a nightmare for the rest of my life. Moments before the incident happened, Melissa asked me, Mom, can you buy me a hamburger? To which I replied, of course. Do you want it now or after we go to the bank? We can go later. I'm not that hungry right now. But you promise you'll buy it for me? In that moment, I promised her I would buy her that hamburger. However, I couldn't. I wasn't able to fulfill that promise. My daughter stopped holding my hand, and without explanation, I found her on the floor with a puddle of blood and a bullet to her head. To the aggressor, I forgive you. You were a victim too. As a 16-year-old, the community failed you, just like it failed my precious baby. Although I do hope that in the many years you spend in prison, you get time to reflect on your actions because you took away the most valuable thing I had in my life, my Princess Melissa. I ask the community to help me preserve her memory. Don't let her die in vain. We should be filled with sadness, but anger as well. How is it possible that a little girl dies in broad daylight? How is it possible that we can send men to Mars, but we can't fix the gun violence in our city? How is it possible, excuse me, let Melissa be the last child who dies from gun violence in this neighborhood? We want safer neighborhoods. We want our kids to grow big and strong. No mother should have to bury their own child. Violence shouldn't be something we grow accustomed to. As a community, we failed Melissa. As a city and state, we failed Melissa. As a nation, we failed Melissa. I am very grateful for the outpouring support of support we have received. From your donation, to your prayers. Thanks to your donations, we will, be, we will be able to take Melissa back to Mexico in the upcoming week. God gained an angel, but I will always remember her infectious smile. Help me preserve Melissa's memory. Help me bring justice and order to this violent neighborhood. That's the end of her remarks, and I'd close with this.
final burial place of Melissa. It's been a tough road, and please, as the funeral happens here, as the process of transition to Mexico, please give the space to family. Please respect their wishes. There will be no more statements. There will be no more interviews. Let the family begin to heal. And now I'll introduce uh, Mayor Lightfoot. Thanks, Matt. Um, I'm 22nd Ward Alderman uh, Michael D. Rodriguez, Mike Rodriguez. And <clears throat> this uh, incident occurred, this tragic situation occurred in the community I've called home my entire life. Saturday, at, Saturday afternoon and early evening, I was alerted to this tragic incident and immediately went to the site where I encountered 10th District Police and Area 4 detectives going door to door with businesses, with residents, trying to see if there were any leads and any video. I was there working with them, translating for them, and I want to stop and say thank you for your tireless work. Our community owes you a debt of gratitude for bringing at least a little bit of justice to Melissa's mother, Araceli, and to the Ortega family. I also want to say, as a community, the La Vita community, the Little Village community has come together to wrap their arms around side by side with the family, supporting them. I've been on countless calls. Over a dozen with 10th District Commander Will Bentoncourt, who I want to thank very much for his work. I've been on calls with the Chief Medical Examiner, Pani Rukumar, thank her for her work in this situation. But most importantly, I want to come back to thanking people like Matt DiMatteo, Elena Calzada, people who have worked hand in hand with the family. As Matt stated, we've been able to raise money for the family, they'll need it. But what a tragic situation. A family who's come to this country not six months ago and is the victim of senseless violence. You know, growing up in the community, I was firsthand witness of that violence. And I dedicated my career to try and bring peace to our community. I will not lose hope. We as a community will not lose hope. community where we are proud to live in, work in, pray in, and continue to live in. Brief comments in, in Spanish. Mi nombre es Mike Rodriguez, soy el concejal del Shikto 22. Hoy es un día que agradecemos, es un día para agradecer a la policía momentos después, horas después del evento que pasó, la tragedia que pasó el sábado, Ahí estuve con la policía tocando en puertas con los negocios y tam también en los residentes de la comunidad La Villita buscando evidencia, videos, de nuestra comunidad para una justicia para la familia de Melissa Ortega, la mamá Araceli y su familia. Y lo puedo decir que yo agradezco al, al trabajo que hizo la policía y también la comunidad, porque la información sobre este arresto, estos cargos, viene de la comunidad, viene de la unidad y el apoyo que ha dado la comunidad a la familia Ortega. Le agradezco mucho a a la organización Nueva Vida, 
Chicago Survivors, a su personal para caminar con la familia Ortega en estos días. Sigo con el mensaje que he vivido en la comunidad de la toda mi vida. Es una comunidad, comunidad fuerte, resistente, una comunidad con mucho orgullo. Yo digo que no perdemos la esperanza. Hoy día le digo a mi comunidad que no vamos a perder la esperanza de nuestra comunidad puede ser mejor, puedo ser, ser una comunidad con más paz. Y sigo trabajando en eso con mi comunidad. Gracias. Yes, I need it. Thank you. Um, I share part of Little Village. I just want to say thank you. Uh, uh, to obviously uh, CPD, we're here for that reason. But before that, obviously we mourn for, for Melissa. Uh, I feel for, for the mom, Araceli. Um, we mourn with her um, in, in such a way that it's just unimaginable. I have three daughters, um, one that's for the youngest, and I cannot imagine uh, life without her. I'd like to believe that something changed uh, this last couple of days with what happened with, uh, with, with Melissa. The community came together um, like never before. Now, on my end, we've had many uh, young teenagers shot, many of them dead. You know, I recall one young lady who was coming home from school. Um, Coming home from school, she was going to UIC, 19 years old. An Aaron bullet hit her in the head, dropped dead. Never found out who, who did it. Nobody came forward. To this day, uh, tips, anybody knows anything about that, should come forward to the police. I hope that this moment changes things. Uh, in Little Village and in this city, of uh, why we, this cannot happen. Moments like this cannot happen where we lose such a precious child. It just, it just cannot, no longer. We're in this city. But coming together, um, and I thank you, Mayor, for reaching out to the family and, and doing everything you can to make sure that, that they have everything that they need and all the support services that are being provided to them. Um, that's what the city should be about. So I'm glad to be here because of that. But more importantly, how police are coming together um, like never before. I, I haven't seen the level of intensity um, in other cases. And bringing together everything, surveillance, community tips, uh, knocking on doors, uh, because something clicked. If you look at her child, her face, Precious, full of life. It's terrible where we find ourselves. But there's a silver lining coming together and changing this. And I hope there's a law in Springfield coming. Melissa's law. That punishes to the utmost those who give guns to minors. Those that are really the true culprits 
of what's happening in our communities. Because minors are being sent with guns to do the crimes, to kill people at that age. And that should be unconscionable. And it should be one of the things that we should tackle when it comes to violence in this state and hopefully in this country. Those responsible for putting guns in the hands of children, because those are children, 16 years old is a, is a minor, is a child, are the true responsible criminals for what's happening in, in our communities, in our city. And I hope they serve office and she personally prosecutes this individual. To the full extent of the law. Because that will be the moment where the city changes. Lo digo en español. Y me pongo emocional porque tengo una niña. Y está. Y se han visto demasiadas situaciones, niños, en esa situación. Papás, mamás, que trabajan dos turnos, día y noche, para dar una vida mejor a sus hijos. Para que esto pase, es Ustedes tienen hijas, que no vuelva a pasar. Las leyes tienen que cambiar. Los responsables que ponen... Las armas, las manos de los menores, de los niños, tienen que pagar como nunca. Lo máximo será, debe ser el, el crimen más arma en las manos de un niño. Y como sociedad deberíamos asegurar que eso pase. Gracias a todos. Les digo a la gente, no pierdan fe, no pierdan el optimismo. Las cosas están cambiando, pero necesitamos su ayuda. Donde un crimen ocurrió, ponga su parte. Usted es parte de la solución. Gracias a la policía, al superintendiente, todas las gentes que pusieron su, su esfuerzo. Por eso estamos aquí. Estamos cambiando en este momento. Ojalá sea un momento de, de, de luz donde esa luz no se ilumine. Good afternoon, everyone, and, and thank you uh, for being here. A lot of powerful statements. Uh, this afternoon. I want to first thank um, the Chicago Police Department, Superintendent David Brown, Chief of Detectives <clears throat> Brendan uh, Dinahan, um, and in particular the hard working men and women of the detective division and the patrolmen that supported them who worked tirelessly, literally round the clock to bring us to this moment, um, identify and apprehend, and with the help of the state's attorney to charge the individuals who are responsible for taking the life of young Melissa Ortega. And these folks, as I said, have been working tirelessly around the clock to solve this case and bring those responsible to justice. We also have to give thanks to the state's attorney's office um, the Assistant State's Attorney 
attorneys who worked hand in glove with um, our officers and detectives who helped guide this investigation um, from its outset. Um, against these individuals. And again, thank you, State's Attorney uh, Fox and the team uh, for all of their hard work as well. I also have to thank um, Pastor Matt and New Life, who has been an incredible champion for the vulnerable and for the dead and dying in Little Village. I have to thank the entirety of the Little Village community who once again rose to the occasion to wrap their arms <clears throat> around this grieving family as they continue to do so, um, but also to provide important leads and support. I have to thank the two aldermen, Alderman Rodriguez and Alden Cardenas, um, who I know themselves went door to door, talking to folks, helping them overcome their fear, looking for a video that might be helpful. So thank you always for your work on behalf of the residents of your wards. Ladies and gentlemen, we've lost too many children to violence in Chicago. Too many. This tragedy sitting on top of so many others has scarred and broken the heart of our city. Imagine coming to Chicago to make a better life for your family and then losing your child, literally as you were walking down the street, hand in hand, thinking about a lighter moment and having that child disappear in a hail of gunfire. As a mother myself, It's hard for me to imagine the pain that Araceli feels that will haunt her, no doubt, for the rest of her days. No one, no one should have to endure this kind of pain. And we again express our sincere condolences on behalf of a city that's broken by this tragedy to Melissa's family. Well, nothing can bring back her life, taken far too soon. I hope that the fact that we are standing here today, the police department and the state's attorney announcing charges will bring some measure of solace to this aching community. I hope it sends a message to those who wish to cause harm and fear and tear apart our city and act with regard, with no regard for the sanctity of any life, that we will hold you accountable and we will do everything everything in our power to make that happen. I mourn for the people of Villa Village. I've spoken to too many mothers in that community who told me that they're afraid, <clears throat> afraid to simply step outside of their homes and live their lives. Afraid because they believe that the gangs have taken over. Spoken as so many young people, as recently as this week in Little Village, who walk past murals, the names of those lost by gun bellies, and that becomes their norm. 
What they've told me is that they need more support to be able to live their lives in freedom and without fear and to be able to grasp the opportunities that are there and fulfill their God-given potential. Little Village is a rich and vibrant community that has seen too much heartbreak, far too many children living in the shadows of gun violence, too many elders who are also living in fear. It's our obligation, neighbors, and my obligation as mayor, to work with the stakeholders and leaders of Little Village to bring peace there once and for all. This isn't a problem that just arose on Saturday. It's not a problem that just arose this year or even last. It's been a problem of long standing, and it's way past time that we unite, that we come together, and we bring peace to this beautiful, vibrant community of Little Village. We have to provide every possible support and resource that amplifies the strength and vibrancy of this community. After all, this is the it has the second largest commercial district in our city. But all that gets dwarfed if people are afraid. Been afraid for many reasons, and most recently because of violence. We have to disrupt the lore of street gangs who are preying upon the young children of this community and others across our city promises of things that can never be delivered and if they are only short term and they evaporate so quickly. I agree with the statements of the alderman. Anyone who gives a gun to a young person and puts it in their hands, knowing that this young child is too immature and impulsive to be able to control themselves, we got to do something about that and prevent that from happening. The kind of opportunities that Melissa and Mom sought should be available to everyone. She shouldn't be leaving this country thinking that she made a terrible mistake by bringing her child here. So, we have a challenge, all of us, everyone. We must step up and meet that challenge. The words of Araceli hang over this room. It's hard not to break down and weep, listening to the pain of this mother who now has to endure this tragedy, who is going to be sitting in a funeral later today and later bearing her child way too early, way too soon. But I do have hope, and I'll tell you why. I have hope because of the people and the strength and the resiliency of the people of Little Village. I've seen them rally time and time again. This is not the only time. I have hope because there are people there who love their community and love their city. And I have hope because I know that we can rise to this challenge. We have let the people of that community down. I talked yesterday about what we must do to make sure that we bring peace to this community. We're committed. I know the state's attorney is committed and her assistance. I know the people of this community are committed. We need an army of the willing to turn around the tide of violence in our city. I want to thank again Pastor Matt and the team of violence interrupters and interveners. I want to thank those on my staff who also rallied immediately to make sure that we were activating the entirety of city government to come to the aid of this family and this community in time of need. I want to thank um, the others who rallied to support uh, this family. That is what we need to turn this tide around from violence. So with that, we're happy to take um, first on-question, on-topic questions, um, and then if we have time, we'll come back we'll do. Um, to other questions.
Thank you so much, Mayor and members of the media. Alex Murphy and I will bring down the mic to you. Uh, just a favor, please keep your mask on while uh, asking a question. We'll start off with Craig Wall from ABC7. Craig? I've actually got off topic, so deferring to my colleagues, I just right. wanted to ask about our Got it. Okay. Dana Kozlov? Thank you, Dana Kozlov, CBS2 News. Uh, first, this perhaps is either for the superintendent, mayor, or, or the state's attorney. Can you please tell me if the 16-year-old, I know he's charged as an adult, but he is a juvenile, does he have a juvenile record? And if so, can you please provide the details? He is a juvenile. He does have a juvenile record. We will be providing a full recitation of his background tomorrow at his bond hearing in respect to the Juvenile Confidentiality Acts. We will, we will provide a recitation of his record tomorrow afternoon at his bond hearing. But nothing before, before bond court? No, ma'am. Okay, and then I have one more um, on-topic question. Um, I'm not sure who would like to field this, but Alderman Cardin has talked about the community coming together. Unfortunately, I've covered many of these very tragic announcements, and rarely do we see the superintendent, state's attorney, and the mayor together at these sad announcements. So is this, what does this appearance from the three of you who've been, you've, who've lobbed criticism at one another over the past several months, what does this signify? Well, I, I think I've been saying for the last several years that we have been working collaboratively with the Chicago Police Department on cases that make the news and others that do not. This is a horrific tragedy, has been evidenced by the outpouring that you've seen over the course of the last several days. As the mayor has said before, as the superintendent has said before, we need all hands on deck to deal with the violence in our communities. And the tragedies that we have seen during the course of this year and last, and historically, um, requires us to come together. This is an open manifestation of our commitment to work together to ensure that all of our communities are safe. Would anyone... I would just add, it, it, it is a, uh, you know, a unique opportunity for us to have a public showing of what happens behind the scene, but also I think to rise to the challenge of how this community has come together. Normally when we have gang-related shootings, no one speaks to the police, including the victims. Uh, there, there's a high level of street justice retaliation, as you all have covered for many, many years. But everyone involved in this incident came forward to help us with information to break this case. So if the community can come together in unique ways, uh, so should we. We have behind the scenes, but I think the public aspect of this press conference is important to convey a message not only to the community, but also to offenders. We are working as a team to bring you to justice when you commit violence in this city. Mayor? Well, I, I just want to amplify uh, the comments that the state's attorney has. Um, the tragedy of, of 2021, I think, were a moment of reflection for all of us. Um, this is an opportunity for us to demonstrate how we work behind the scenes publicly. And certainly this tragedy of the taking of the life of this young girl um, has pricked the consciousness of all of us. But really the tragedy of, of 2021 with so many um, shootings and so many homicides, you know, we, we get asked all the time, well, what's going to be different about this year? Um, and I think, as the superintendent just said, we are seeing communities rise up and really put, let their faith overcome their fear. Um, we would not be standing here today if the community hadn't come forward and said we're not going to tolerate this kind of um, horrific murder in our community. We are going to rally together and do everything we can to support bringing those responsible for justice. And what would we be like if we didn't match their passion and their enthusiasm? So I think you'll see um, more opportunities for us to demonstrate uh, a unity of purpose. Um, we're not going to agree on every issue, um, but we do agree that violence 
has to be addressed in a holistic way and that we've got to do everything that we can to make sure that we hold those who are responsible accountable. And it starts with bringing them together and getting them charged. And again, I want to thank the state's attorney and her team uh, for their support um, and for their tireless work. We all have the same mission, which is to keep our community safe. Thanks, Mayor. Liz from ABC7. I just wanted to know if we had any updates in any of the cases. We've had at least two teenagers in the past few weeks gunned down and killed after school. Caleb Westbrooks, are you, are you dedicating the same kind of resources to those cases? And is, is the community cooperating? Have you made any progress on those? And then also, if there's any update in the hit and run. In so I'm going to bring up uh, Chief of Detective Brendan Dignahan to update. You, you have to give us a little bit more information about the two cases, but uh, so we can uh, give you some, some uh, information. But uh, yes, as far as committing the same level of resources, we have done that, uh, primarily uh, in communities uh, where people cooperate, things go faster in the investigation. Where they don't, it's much more challenging for us. That's why we really want to highlight those cases to other communities that may not have a sense to collaborate with us, how quickly the cases can be resolved, how closure can come forth if you uh, cooperate. You know, it's, it's, it's been a broken trust. And, and it's been broken on Chicago Police Department side with these, some of these communities. And so we're, we're overextending a kind hand to these communities. We're uh, really highlighting engaging the community to build trust for every officer, regardless of your assignment. Everyone has the challenge of getting in the community, getting out of your car, getting from behind your desk to build trust so that we can have quick conclusions. If not prevent, we can quickly bring people to justice with the collaboration in the community when we have uh, tragic incidents like this. Brenda, you want to come up and just update on the two cases she uh, asked about? Well, I think we're, you know, kind of on topic now. So <clears throat> I'll get offline with you on those uh, updates. I don't have a current status. And anything in the hit and run of the retired police officer on Tui Avenue last week? That's an uh, open active investigation. We do have some updates on that, but n not anything that I can uh, share uh, today. Thank you, Liz. <clears throat> and Nate Fox. Um, Nate Rogers, Fox 32. So I know you all said you're going to discuss this in bond tomorrow, but um, State's Attorney Fox, we're hearing that the 16-year-old has recent arrests for robberies, even a felony carjacking case, and it just been released from electronic monitoring um, some weeks ago. Can you confirm that at this time and just simply answer the question of why we are considering continuing to be at this place where we're having conversations about suspects reoffending? So, as I said earlier, we will be going through a recitation of the 16-year-old's uh, criminal history tomorrow at bond court. But I can tell you that as of today, he was not on electronic monitoring. I've heard that there was some chatter about that. He was not on electronic monitoring today. Um, one of the things that we have to continue to address, we, do we have a 16-year-old um, with a history who was arrested with a 27-year-old um, with a gun. And the reality is, if you want to ask why we continue to see this, we are seeing this. This is not a new phenomenon. As I mentioned in my remarks, this was a phenomenon when I was in high school. We have to be able to have, as the mayor has said, a whole of city approach to this, to deal with the fact that young people um, are not going to be able to be incarcerated for the rest of their lives. So when they come out of the criminal justice system, to be able to have some measures of support to deal with that. Because we are seeing people come back out and reoffend. That is not unique uh, to this situation. What needs to happen is that we have to wrap around services to young people who are impacted by violence within their communities. It is the good work that uh, the pastor has done in Little Village, where he has seen people come in and out of the criminal justice system. And so it is incredibly frustrating because it's also foreseeable. If we do not have resources and outlets for young people who are involved, um, whether they're caught in the criminal justice system or not, we will continue to see engagement like this. And so it is incredibly frustrating. We will have a recitation tomorrow. Um, but we have to talk about violence prevention. We have to talk about reentry um, at the same time as we talk about accountability. All of those things together keep our community safe. 
Gotcha. And then my last question, um, Superintendent Brown, had your agency um, already been in contact with these, the guys that are in, involved? One of the um, hurtful things for me in talking to residents in Little Village over the weekend was them saying we were seeing this every other day, people getting shot in Little Village. We know that there's been a long term, little, folks in Little Village have been dealing with decades of violence as it relates to gangs. Did you all already have eyes on these guys? Did you know what they were up to at this time? So as we recounted in the uh, TikTok of what happened, uh, this young person is just randomly picked up by this uh, adult. Uh, we believe they knew each other. Um, and like many young people, I think the mayor recounted it, the, the impulsive nature of a young person being handed a gun uh, to uh, meet out violence is such a spontaneous event. You know, foresight, uh, as you mentioned, uh, li likely was a challenge too, too great to overcome uh, to, to be ahead of the impulsive nature of a 16-year-old and, and anticipate a, an adult giving them a gun at a particular time where three people in a rival gang are, are seen uh, as they drive by. I mean, it's just too many spontaneous, impulsive things happening to, this is not a planned, this wasn't a hit or anything like that where adults are conspiring. This was a 16 year old uh, making such a tragic decision that would affect the rest of his life. Um, that foresight is one of the things that likely w wouldn't have been something that, you know, we all could have done as, as police officers but we do have significant resources dedicated to the 10th district, particularly Little Village before this happened and we'll continue that, primarily focus on these particular gangs to take them down. So soon you'll be hearing more. We're not done with you for what you calculated behind the scenes using this 16 year old to meet our violence. Uh, the influence these gangs have over our young people, the filthy lucre that they use to entice them, uh, we want to take from you and we want to dismantle uh, the reasons for you being in a gang and, and for these tragedies continue to happen. Thanks, Super Superintendent. Stephanie from the Tribune. Hi, um, my questions are actually very related to what you just answered. So um, was police aware of an increase in shootings in that area and were you doing anything to address that increase? So, so far this year, uh, of course, one shooting is one too many and, and uh, uh, when you have a tragedy of this nature, uh, recounting statistics uh, just, just, you know, just doesn't, doesn't make uh, uh, any of us feel safer, but we, we, we are down 19% uh, in homicide so far this year and 9% in shooting. So, uh, we are working tirelessly to prevent the one shooting from happening. Our officers are running toward danger, they're running toward, but as they're going down dark alleys, even this particular case involved a long hours of staking out, trying to find uh, this car in, in, in gang conflict territory in, in the little village area. We've made a lot of arrests before and after this incident happened and we'll continue to make a lot of arrests. We'll continue to focus on these particular If we can't get federal penitentiary time, send them to state prison to where they cannot hold these uh, fine people hostage in their own neighborhood. So just to clarify, that decrease is citywide, right? Uh, there yeah, was so far in the 10th district as well, which is Little Village. Okay. Yes. Um, and then the 16-year-old, you spoke on it a little bit. Is there any concern that he was threatened by any older gang member? Erica from Univision Chicago. Uh, I, there, are, there are several things that are not clear to me. I'm so sorry. Um, Attorney Fox, 
So he is 16. He's going to be tried in adult court tomorrow. Yes, ma'am. So we're going to be able to know his name, his record, and everything we will know. more about tomorrow correct okay perfect that was my first question my second question and I'm so sorry because I didn't I didn't understand that part my second question is was both of these individuals given Guzman and the minor was were on the radar of the authorities before this incident were you did you know that they were affiliated to the gangs do you know uh, they have been you know, so we're right trying now. to avoid a backdoor answer that uh, gives this juvenile's criminal history um, until they get to court. So we'll defer uh, till, until tomorrow, and then you'll see our interactions with this young person. Thank you. Thank you. Heather Sharon. WTT. Hi. Um, can I have um, Superintendent Brown and then the mayor? Um, the police department sent resources into Little Village amid concerns that there would be retaliatory shootings. Do you remain concerned about retaliatory shootings? And are those increased patrols still in effect in Little yes, Village? Yes, they'll be in effect. And yes, we're still concerned with retaliatory shootings. Uh, one of the gang members were struck by one of the bullets fired by the 16-year-old. Uh, and so there's a high degree of retaliation on our radar, and so we'll keep those resources in place. We'll make arrests. We'll focus on these particular gangs and others in the area to, to ensure they hear us clearly. Uh, this won't be tolerated, and we're going to dismantle you. That's, that's the message we want to send to these gangs. We'll be relentless about it, and it'll be until further notice. And for the mayor, if I could ask you about um, the city council's vote today to pay $14 million to two men who were tortured and then convicted by associates of disgraced former police commander John Burge. Does this settlement close the door on John Burge's <clears throat> claims on Chicago's taxpayer dollars? Um, I don't have an immediate Let's answer to that, but I will get it to you. I mean, look, <clears throat> the fact of the matter is, is that um, just to recount the history, John Burge was um, fired from uh, the police department in 1993, 1993, by um, the police board at that time. And we have paid, as a city, as taxpayers, an unbelievably heavy toll uh, for his crimes. Um, and I'll call them crimes. Um, I, but we can get you specific information about whether or not there are any other uh, cases in the pipeline. Um, but these payments are obviously of great concern uh, to me, um, not just for him, but we have others um, that, uh, where there's serious allegations of misconduct. And we have to make sure um, that when the claims are valid that we um, do what we can to address the, the harm that's been done. Thank you, Mayor. Tom Shuba, sometimes. Hi, Superintendent. Um, can you give us any background on the gang dispute that sparked the shooting and kind of the toll that it's already taken on the community? So we're, we're being careful again. Um, gangs love their name spoken uh, by police officials and others. So we, we, we won't give them that satisfaction by mentioning their name. But we know who they are. These gangs have again, for decades, had a grip on these communities through threat, intimidation, and violence. Uh, we've addressed these gangs with several federal conspiracy investigations in the past. We continue to look for opportunities to continue uh, that effort. Um, uh, federal charges uh, have been the most successful at dismantling gangs over the history of gangs, if you look back. Uh, from the 90s till, till today, you know, many gangs have been dismantled for federal conspiracies. Uh, civil forfeiture. Um, and we had questions about this the other day, and I just want to just take an opportunity. You know, Al Capone wasn't arrested for the violence he meted out here. He was arrested because we took his stuff. He didn't file his taxes and the violence he took with him to the federal pen to his death. 
upon release. So, so it's smart uh, to go after the ill-gotten gains, to dismantle these gains, and also take away their opportunity to, to dang, dangle filthy money they earn, blood money, I call it, to our young people. You know, the, the jewelry and the cars and, and, and the cash that they flash in front of our young pe people to entice them into this life. Take that away and you dismantle them and their opportunity to entice our young people. All right, Craig Wall, front and center. Mayor, thank you. Um, without addressing this particular case this morning, Arnie Duncan had some very critical comments of how the police are being run and utilized. He called it a system in crisis. Um, can you respond to the, the, some of the criticisms? And uh, obviously, we're sounding very much like a potential mayoral candidate. Um, we're here talking about the murder of an eight-year-old. And we heard very heartfelt comments from her mother. Now is not the time to talk about politics. I, I won't. I mean, do, not, do you not, think, do you think not, criticism not of the police department is fair? I'm sorry? Do you think his criticism of the police department is fair or, or not well, First fair of all, all, I was a city council. I don't know all of his comments about the police department, but I said this before and I'll say it again. Anybody who thinks in the, the, in the midst of this violence that the best thing to do is defund our police department, not provide them with the support and resources they need to be able to frankly address exactly the kinds of violence that we're talking about isn't a serious person. No, people all over the city, <clears throat> neighborhood after neighborhood, they don't want to defund our police department. They want our police department to be respectful and constitutional in the work that they do, but they want the police to protect them. And somebody who's proposing that we basically just let the numbers drift down and take away resources from our department, it's not an either or proposition. And I think I've demonstrated that. We know that the long term play to end violence, to bring peace to neighborhoods, is to invest. That makes no sense to me whatsoever, and I don't think it makes sense to most people in the city. But I'm Th not going to talk about politics. Thanks a lot.